this is part seven of the continuing Iron Man helmet series. Um, in this one, we're going to jump back into working on the pickaxe board that actually controls the helmet and makes it go up and down. Um, and then we'll get into how to connect that remote control to this so that it operates wirelessly. Now, what I have over here is basically a finished product. Um, this is what we're going to uh, try to get to with this series here. And we're going to do this in steps because um, if you're not familiar with electronics, I'm sure this looks complicated and uh, puzzling. But so we're going to jump into that. And the first thing we're going to jump into is getting this ready for the switch. So uh, the instructions that we're basically following here, uh, that's going to be page 26 on the PDF for the pickaxe board. Uh, and again, I'll link the uh, link to this in the description. But we're basically going to be following this. And all we really have to do is add a 10K resistor from our pin, which is where the... Uh, where we want the switch to be fed into the chip and then a 1k between the pin and where we put our switch so the 10k is going to go from the pin to the zero volt or the ground bar which is going to be the very bottom here and then the 1k is going to go over to our switch and uh, the way that I have this one set up we're going to kind of have it a little bit at an angle um, just so there's enough room to really work uh, this all together. You probably get it in a little bit tighter, but I like to give myself some room. Um, this is, I think this is tight enough. So what we'll do is start with a 10K resistor. Now, um, I've talked about this in other videos. If you don't have uh, a local hardware store or a uh, local electronic store like most Radio Shacks if not all of them have closed already but uh, this I got online from SparkFun and I'll link to link to this in the description as well this is a resistor kit there's 500 resistors in here this has everything that I've needed I've used dozens of these so far in all my projects um, they're organized really well like it all of them are labeled and um, you know the arrows point to the ones on the left or the ones on the right and then it's just basically top down so the top one is on the front the bottom one is on the back so it's pretty self-explanatory uh, easy to identify them and then there's a chart on the back in case one of them gets loose and you forgot what kind of resistor it is um, so there's quick reference and stuff so Again, this is really good. Um, I've used several of them from this so far on all my projects, like I just said, but that's what I'm using. Um, so from this, there uh, I've already taken out the 10K resistor. So what I'm going to do is just apply that from pin 1. So there's a little hole there for pin 1. And I'm going to run this down to the ground line, which is on the very bottom. And I'm just going to jam that in there. And then fold these over on the other side. I want to solder them. Okay. Now the 1K, I've already taken that one out as well. And it looks like I went to second row in. So we're going to go to the second hole for that first pin and then join that to the first hole on the second row. Now what I'm calling the second row here is on this on this proto board there's three rows of uh, three pinouts that are run together. So basically, you can't really tell from the back here, but 
Um, but I have something good to point with here. Okay, so where these white lines are, all three of these pins are connected. Now on the top here, this is your five volt. So this is where you get your power. And then on the bottom, is this is all connected as a ground. So everything you run to this uh, it will be grounded. Everything you run to this will get power. And then if you join it to whatever you've got going on on this row, all three of these are connected um, on the way down. So they're not connected to each other, just, you know, side to side, not top and bottom. So you'll have to do that for whatever you're working on. But, so I'm gonna go to this second, or this, basically it's the middle row, and then I think I went, this is like the second one up. Um, so I'm just gonna put that there, because then when I add this, the um, RF switch, I'll run that wire to one of these two pins, or uh, holes here, and then that'll be connected to this resistor, and then that'll operate pin one on this and set everything in motion. So, without further ado, let's solder them in. And I'm just going to solder these in, and that'll be pretty much the end of this video. I know most of these videos I've I've done some uh, uh, super speed on the actual putting this stuff together to try and make the video shorter. Hopefully this one's short enough that still gets all the info across. Okay, so that's that, and I don't have my cutters with me. This will be there. Hang on one second, I'll get my cutters. Unprepared for the task at hand, as usual. Sorry about that, but we'll just cut these, trim them up here, and that will be that. Okay, that's that. This is officially ready for me to plug in the switch into one of these pins, one of these slots here on the same row as this resistor. I just uh, wire that in, solder it, and every time I press the button, it'll send the signal to pin one, which will tell the chip what to do. After I program it, of course, but we'll get to that later. But again, that's all it takes. Those two resistors, uh, 10K in, or 10K on the bottom here and a 1K on the top. Uh, if you want a more uh, electronic description of why they go there, again, I suggest James Burton's videos, um, and I'll link to those as well. So there'll be tons of links in the description of this video um, to show you, uh, to send you to that video, and he'll, he will further explain uh, why these work. I don't pretend to know, I just know how to make it work. I don't know why it works, but it works, so I'm going to keep doing it. So, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time. Later.